Welcome to both fifth grade groups. So today is, follow me here, it's day two for my fifth grade Reds group for week four. And it's day one for my fifth grade Bengals group for week four. The only difference to today's problems are the exit tickets that you both completed from the previous lesson. So, I want to go over the fifth grade Bengals exit ticket that they did for week three, day three. And I want you fifth grade Reds to really pay attention to this too, even though you didn't do this exit ticket problem. Now, we have fifth grade Bengals and Reds, pay attention, four six plus four fifth. Well, to add them together, we have to find a common denominator. Common denominator here is 30. So then I got to take 4, 6 to find an equivalent fraction where 30 is the denominator. I do that with 6 times 5 gets you 30. So 4 times 5 gives you 20 over 30. I take the 4 fifths now and I convert that into an equivalent fraction where the denominator is 30. By times in the 5 by 6 will give me the 30. So I do 4 by 6 to give me 24. So now I have 20 thirtieths plus 24 thirtieths. Now I can add them because the denominators are the same. I take 20 thirtieths plus 24 thirtieths. I get 44 thirtieths. Ooh, somebody here probably did 44 sixtieths and accidentally added the denominators. We can't. Add denominators. Got to keep with the same denominator. Okay. Next, I have an improper fraction if you got 44 thirtieths. So I'm going to ask myself how many 30s go into 44? One of them. 1 times 30 equals 30. I subtract 30, get left with 14. 14, as we all know, or should know, is our numerator. And the denominator never changes, it's still 30. Well, some of you might have stopped here, which is okay. I'm okay with that answer. But realistically, as a sixth grader, you're going to need to, it's, it's probably going to be marked wrong if you stop here. Just give you a heads up, because it can be simplified. Both numbers can be divided by 2. So I divide 14 by 2, and I get 7. I divide 30 by 2 and I get 15, giving me the answer, don't forget that 1, of 1 and 7 fifteenths as a more appropriate 6th grade answer. All right? So most likely if you write this as your answer and you stop here in 6th grade, don't mark it wrong. That means you've done all this work. Ugh. And you got it wrong because you forgot to simplify and reduce it. Keep that in mind. All right. Now, back to my fifth grade Reds exit ticket from yesterday. Now, fifth grade Bengals, pay attention because this is what we're doing today. Something just like this. Okay? Three fifths minus three tenths was your exit ticket, fifth grade Reds. So the picture you have there shows a lot of these shaded in. It shows three fifths minus three tenths. So it, ultimately, it shows this much shaded in. So I have three-fifths. That's one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths shaded in. Okay? Then what happens is I need to cut those fifths into halves. And I need to, because I need to find, I ultimately cut them in halves. So I get this. And I'm taking away three of, now I have tenths. And I'm taking away three of them. One, two, three. I'm left with one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. 
Wow, Mr. Brisbane, that's really confusing to follow along in a picture. It is. The bigger the numbers, the more confusing you can get. Which is why the other version is to find the common denominator. And that's where we're going to focus for everybody here today. So to do the same problem and find the common denominator, I would ultimately find out that 10 is a common denominator. So all I would have to do is change, change 30, 3 fifths into a number that has tenths. So to do that, I times both the numerator and the denominator by 2. And I get 6 tenths. Now I'm going to take 6 tenths minus 3 tenths. And I'll end up getting 3 tenths as my answer. That's a little bit less confusing, but I wanted you to see the picture version of it so it makes sense. Like, all right, my number's gotten smaller because I'm taking away. And I'm sticking with tenths because that's the denominator that I was taking away. So moving on, that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to find the common denominator. Then we're going to subtract, or, well, before we subtract, we have to find the equivalent fraction using the common denominator. And in all of today's problems, one of the two fractions will not change. Ah, correct me, I'm wrong. In number two's problem, the and number four's problem, so half of the problems today, you don't need to change both fractions. But the other half of the problems, we do need to change the fractions. So number one, we change the both denominators to find equivalent fractions to both fractions. So number one, common denominator between the three and the nine. Doing my three times tables, I'll find nine to be the common denominator, so I don't need to change two ninths. All I have to do is change one third. And then I'll take away two ninths. So I'm going to change one third into an equivalent fraction where ninths is the denominator. So what number gets you from three to nine? Three times three gets you nine. So one times three gets you three. So now I have three ninths, and I'm going to take away two ninths. Well, this is something we got to think about really long and hard because we have to remember the denominator doesn't change. So keep that 9 there, but now we're just doing numerator minus numerator. 3 minus 2 equals 1. So the answer for this one is 1 ninth. Step 1, find common denominator. Step 2, make an equivalent fraction. Step three, subtract. Okay, it's the same steps we did for addition, but now the only difference is we're subtracting instead of adding. Number two, five, six minus one fourth. So this is one of those problems where the, you have to find a common denominator and both fractions will change. Go ahead and do that now and then subtract. All right, so here we are. We found the common denominator of 24. Ooh, wait a second, Mr. Brislin. I didn't find 24 as my common denominator. I found 12. Oh, even better. That's going to make it easier for us. So why not make it easier for us? Because the smaller the number, the less reducing I have to end up doing if I'm going to have to reduce it all. Okay, so I'm going to make 12 my common denominator instead of 24. Some of you might have made 24. That's okay. But we want to make it as easy as possible. And the easiest thing we could do is find the least, the smallest common denominator. Also known as the least common denominator. Okay, so we need to turn, turn 5 6 into a fraction where the denominator is 12. So to do that, we took, hopefully you took, 6 and times it by 2. And then you took 5 and times it by 2 to get 10. So we have 10 twelfths, is also known as 5 6. Then we're taking 1 fourth and turning that into an equivalent fraction 
or 12 is your denominator. How many times did it take me to get from 4 to 12? Hopefully you're like tired of me saying that over and over again, that it's like just clicking and saying, well, I know, Mr. Brislin, it's 3. So 1 times 3 is going to give you 3. So then you get 3 twelfths. 10 twelfths minus 3 twelfths equals 7 twelfths. Now, if you got 14 twenty-fourths, because you didn't use 12, but you used 24, you're not wrong, but it just can be reduced by dividing each number by 2, and you'll still get 7 twelfths. All right, number three, here we go. Nine tenths minus one fifth. Find the common denominator, find the equivalent fractions, and subtract. Go ahead and do that now, please. Nine tenths minus one fifth. I found the common denominator to be 10. It's the smallest denominator I can find. That's common. So I take one fifth and I convert it into an equivalent fraction of two tenths. Now I can take away, so that's no longer two tenths, it's being no longer one fifth, it's technically going to become two tenths. Now I can take it away, take two tenths away from nine tenths to give me the answer of seven tenths. All right, last but not least, before the exit ticket, three fourths minus two thirds. Find your common denominator, find your equivalent fractions. Subtract. Hit the pause button to do that now, please. Okay, so did you get 1 12th as your answer? Oh, you didn't? Man, let's argue. Right, so that's okay. If you did, first off, you could end here, go do the exit ticket. But if you didn't get 1 12th, let's work together right now to figure out where, where you went wrong so you don't make that mistake on the exit ticket. So, did you find the common denominator to be 12? Yes, Mr. Brislin, I did. Okay. Did you convert your equivalent fractions of 3 fourths and 2 thirds into equivalent fractions that have the denominator of 12? And did you get the right numerators? Meaning, it was 4 times 3 equals 12, so did you get 3 times 3 to equal 9? No, Mr. Brislin, or yes, I got that. 3 times 4 gives you 12, so did you do 2 times 4 to give you 8? Maybe that's where your mistake is. And then you subtract 9 minus 8 equals 1. I have a feeling if you made a mistake, it's somewhere in here. Can you identify it so you don't make that same mistake in the same place in the next problem? Hopefully you can. If not, ask, ask for my help by emailing me. Ask for a parent's help. Okay. I don't want to just tell you what the mistake is, but I want you to see if you can investigate and figure out yourself with a little bit of assistance if need be. Because if you can pick out the mistake, you're less likely to make the same mistake. All right. So go ahead. Do your exit ticket. Six eighths minus one fourth. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks so much for your participation. Have a great rest of your day.